Hey, sixth grade, welcome to writing grammar class. We are studying expository writing this week, informational writing um, for the next few weeks, actually. Today, we're gonna learn a fun graphic organizer that will help you get all your points labeled, all your paragraphs down, help you remember the introduction as well as the conclusion. Stick with me, I'm gonna teach you how to draw it step by step. And then tomorrow, we'll have some more practice of you doing it independently um, and show you how to label everything. So first, we're gonna start with two round circles for the eyes and what looks like a cherry stem, but it's really gonna be the main point. So we're gonna start with two circles. And let's make it look like cherries. That's your main point. Now, to really make this look more realistic, when we get finished, we need some eyeballs. This is actually the eyes and the horn on your monster, or your dragon, we call it. So let's give him some eyes. I like to give him eyelids, and to do that, I just do this. And let's give him some beady eyes here. All right, let's get ready for his snout and his jaw. Start about where the um, circle is for your eye. We're gonna make a big uh, C shape upside down and come back around, okay? So here we go. Like this. Now we're gonna come back out. We want his bottom jaw to be a little further out than his top. So when you make this next line, come on out past the end of his nose, okay? Like this and a big fat chin. All right, now let's give him some teeth. We're gonna start with a small tooth, a couple small teeth, and then one large pointy tooth that goes up over his top uh, lip. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, to make it look more realistic, like his tooth is actually on the outside of his lip, you can go back and erase that line that's going through his tooth. There we go. Now, we're getting ready for our main points, which are gonna be three big, fat rolls. He's, a, he's like an accordion dragon, so we're gonna give him three, back, three big rolls. You're gonna start with the first one. Start about where you made his eyelid. You're gonna go up like this, like a C shape, a backward C shape, okay? And come around and connect to his neck. So here we go. One, we're just gonna do it two more times. Two, one more. That's for your three main body paragraphs. But we have to have a conclusion and so we're gonna make him a tail that comes around at the bottom and points back up to his face because your conclusion always wraps up what you're talking about and points back to the beginning and restates your introduction. So we're gonna come around, we're gonna do just another C shape, but instead of attaching it here, we're gonna come on around the bottom like this. And it's not gonna be quite as big because his, his booty's a little droopy, okay? We have to really leave room for his feet, so come pretty low to the bottom of your page when you're doing that. All right, let's give him a foot. We're gonna start with the back side of his tail. Let's make his tail first. That way we make sure we have plenty enough space inside the tail to write what we need to write when we label. So I'm gonna go ahead and come here and finish his tail out. And on the end of his tail, I'm gonna make a point, like a dragon tail sort of would have, but it's to remind you that you restate, you point back around to the beginning and restate what you had to say. There we go, just like that, a triangle. Okay, now he needs some feet or he's gonna fall down. Let's start with the back. It's just gonna be two lines down and basically a triangle for his feet. I like to make the left side a little longer so he doesn't lose his balance. You can even give him some toes if you want to. You can give him some toenails if you want. That's up to you. He needs one on the other side, so we're gonna come like this. Yeah, 
in. Let's give him some front feet. Now, we're not professional artists. Yours may look a little different than mine. It's not gonna look exactly the same. Mine doesn't look exactly the same every time I draw it. The main point is that you have all the parts to your dragon so that when we label, each part correlates to a part of your paragraph. It's like your graphic organizer, but it's a little more fun than just drawing a T-chart or um, a star chart. So now let's label. Oh, I forgot one thing. Each paragraph has main points, so we're gonna give him some points on each one of these big fat, what I call jelly rolls. So to make it look realistic, sort of like we did his tooth, we're gonna make the point in the middle. Um, we're gonna erase behind it so it looks like the point sitting sort of in front on this side, and the other two are gonna be around on the back. So just three points. I usually do the first and the last a little shorter and the middle one taller. Just making triangles is all you're doing. I'm gonna go back and erase inside the biggest middle point. To give the illusion that it's sitting sort of 3D closer to you. Okay, now you can always add a few things. You can put a collar on your pet dragon. You can add some eyelashes however you want to do it. Lots of times I do like to give him a collar because you're in control of your writing and you're in control of your paragraph. He's not a wild monster that gets off track. He goes where you have him go, where you lead him with your words and your sentences. So I'm going to put a collar on him to show that you have control over him. Some students in the past have even liked to name their own dragon. So I'm going to just put a little um, name tag on his collar. You can name him whatever you want. I'm going to name him BB for Bird Bunch, but you can name yours whatever you'd like. Okay, so let's give him some eyelashes. Good to go. All right, now let's talk about each point let's label all right so first of all you have to have a main point it's your topic it's what you're talking about this large horn on top represents your main point your topic so it's going to be your this is B it's going to be your main point okay the head comes at the front the head's always in front it's at the beginning it's what you see first when you see it if you were if he was if he were to be walking down the road and you ran into him you would run into his face first right it's what you would see first it's your introduction I'm gonna put intro now he has a lot of teeth it could look really scary he has a lot of teeth but no bite notice he has no teeth on the top so he's just kind of going to gum on you. He's going to um, tell a lot in the introduction to kind of hook you. He can hook into you with this tooth, right? But he's not. you're not going to tell all your main points, all your good stuff in your introduction. You just want a great hook sentence. You want it to be interesting. You want to hook your reader, give your thesis statement, and let your audience know what they're about to read about, what the topic's going to be. So we've got... A lot of teeth. But no bite. You need a hook sentence. Hook. A hook sentence. You want to hook your reader, okay? Now, this is going to be your first paragraph. Your introduction is always your first paragraph.
I'm going to label that paragraph number one. Okay, this is going to be your second paragraph. Paragraph number two. This is going to be your first point. It's your second paragraph, but your first point, okay? It's your first point with supporting details. How many details do you need to have? How many explanations? How many descriptions? You need to have three. This is to remind you that you need three. One, two, three. Okay? We're just going to repeat that process in the next one. This is first paragraph, second paragraph, first point. This would be third paragraph, second point. Paragraph number three. Second point with supporting details. You always have to support your work. Again, three main points. We're going to repeat this process with our last big fat roll. And it's going to be our fourth paragraph. Third point with supporting details. Great. And don't forget to number your points up here at the top. One, two, three. Okay, we're almost to the end. The last thing we have to do is our conclusion. It goes here. Our conclusion is going to wrap it up, restate, summarize. It's going to point back to something that you mentioned in the beginning at your introduction. You're going to restate. So I'm going to write conclusion here. It's going to be paragraph number what? Five. That's right. And that word's conclusion. I'm going to put restate, summarize, wrap up here. Because that's what his big tail is doing. Point back to the beginning. All right, looks good. I know this is different. I want you to give it your best shot. We're going to practice some more in class um, on Friday. You're going to need to be able to draw it from memory, but I'm going to give you some practice first. Um, we'll be, we've been working on our goals, so what this will translate into is you'll have your introduction. And then your second paragraph, first point, your first point is going to transfer, you're going to transfer over what your first goal is. And then you're going to put your supporting details and your supporting um, points with that first point, which is your first goal. Then this the third paragraph, which would be your second point, is going to be your second goal that you listed. And your fourth paragraph, third point, is going to be your third goal that you listed. Don't forget, you're always going to add your supporting details. We need topic sentences. Let's put that on there. What's some things we're going to need? We're going to need a thesis statement. We're going to need topic sentences. We're also going to need transition words that will be like a glue that will easily um, move us from one thought to the next, one goal to the next, one paragraph to the next. So we're going to need transition words. I'm going to put them at the bottom because they're going to go through all your paragraphs. Okay, so I want you to... Um, reproduce this on your own paper in your notebook. We're going to discuss it and we're going to get ready to transfer over your goals 
If you haven't come up with your goals yet, that was assigned earlier in the week. Remember I said we're gonna need this later in the week, so make sure you put it in your notebook. We brainstormed a list of 10 goals for the year, and I'll let you choose your top three. Um, so have those ready. If you don't, get them ready for class. Can't wait to see you. Uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow, actually. I'm pre-recording this, as you can tell, so.